and that's Child of the World by Fowls the Bad Guy. And of course, we have brought him back to the studio to discuss yet another music video that's sparking a lot of controversy out there. How are you doing today? I'm okay. I'm good, good. good. So, I actually want to know how you're feeling with regards to the responses that you've gotten to Child of the World. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling, I'm feeling happy because um, I've been able to start the conversation, you know, to spark the conversation. And that was, you know, the, the intention from the beginning. Okay, let's backtrack a bit. What would you say was the intention behind the story that you actually told? Okay, well, I was trying to send out some positive messages you know, quite a few messages in one. So um, pretty much the text at the end of the video actually, you know, sums up the messages in the video. So rape is involved, uh, HIV AIDS is involved, and um, mental, general mental health, mm. you know, so suicide, um, you know, in, in, in the light of obviously recent events out here in, you know, in Nigeria, I thought that w was something that needed to be touched on as well. So. Yeah. And what about daddy issues? Daddy issues is in there as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, there's, there's tons of messages in, in that. OK, so. there are tons of messages. And this may be why some people may feel that the song didn't go how they wanted it to go. And at the end of the day, I think it's time for everyone to understand that what you were doing here was telling one person's story. So I want you to actually address those controversies. Some people are saying that you aren't like, People think that you should have spent more time focusing on Uncle Peter, right? <laughs> and people are out there saying that you basically turned her into a perpetrator in some sort of way. What response would you give to that? Well, um, <clears throat> first of all, I'll say wait on to them. Thank you so much for your uh, critique. But um, I think, like you said, I was telling one person's story from her perspective. You know, so I was telling the story from the victim's perspective. So for the people that were saying, um, you know, it came off as some sort of victim blaming because of the uh, term child of the world. Basically, the, on the chorus, the victim herself yeah. is blaming herself. So I'm not, I'm not victim blaming because I'm telling the story from the victim's pers mm. perspective. And it's the victim that's actually calling herself a child of the world. But were you a bit surprised when you got that response from some people? Initially, yeah, because I, I, thought, I thought it was clear that, you know, this story is coming from this angle. And, um, you know, this story has continued to go in that angle. Mm. So I was surprised that people were like, expecting me to tell the story and link it to another angle, another direction. Basically, what they're looking for in this work of art can still be done in another work of art. Mm. So I think, I mean, I think those um, points of critique are rather unfair, if you ask me. Actually, I would agree with you on that. But mm. let's speak about the culture of daddy issues. I would say that the first person who publicly touched on it was Token Makenwa when she wrote her book. However, it's something that we often overlook because a lot of the time we either don't want to see it as what it is or we don't understand it. However, you portrayed it in a particular way in Child of the World. Why is it important for young women to have father figures in their lives to some extent growing up? It's very important. And I think, um, you know, the, the role of parents can never be dismissed or undermined uh, in the growing up of a child. And, you know, we often find that children that grow up in homes that, you know, don't necessarily stay together, that eventually sort of affects them. Children that grow up in homes where, you know, parents are separated, divorced, you know, these issues usually af affect them. So that's why parents really need to make the effort to stay with their children all the way throughout their, you know, their youth and just be there for them in every way possible. You know, on this song, her dad pretty much ran away. So, you know, she didn't have that daddy figure in her life. And, that just made her go the extreme direction, you know, the wrong way, of course. But, um, you know, it's, it's something that I think definitely a lot of young people growing up mm. experience and, you know, it needs to be touched on. And did you expect that direction from Kemi Adetiba with the visuals or were you a bit surprised yourself? No, we discussed it, so I wasn't surprised. Mm. Uh, before, before we filmed, we discussed it and, you know, she, um, she said uh, that this was the direction that she was going to go. And funny enough, she said to me that mm. she was... Um, anticipating some sort of um, uh, backlash, like, you know, what, what's going on right now, actually. But I didn't even see it. <laughs> you know, I didn't <laughs> even see it. And, um, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm happy with the direction she took the video. I think uh, it, was, it was a great video, and I'm, I'm very happy with it. That's really good. So yeah. let's go back to the main issues that you spoke of, which is rape culture, suicide, and you mentioned one other. 
uh, HIV. HIV. Okay, let's start off with Nigeria's rape culture. How do you feel about the prevalence of rape in Nigeria today? I think it's, it's really, really getting to an extreme um, point and, you know, something needs to be done. Mm. And what could be done is, you know, maybe legislation coming in to help. I mean, from a lawyer's point of view, I remember um, when I was in active practice and, mm. you know, just seeing that the law itself makes it incredibly difficult for a victim to actually successfully bring forward a case of abuse. And that is... is, is Why quite, is that, though? It's quite, it's quite absurd because <clears throat> now the law requires that there be some sort of... Now, there's something called corroboration in law. Witness evidence. We ha you have to bring forward evidence of an eyewitness. So imagine someone is going to rape someone. I mean, they're not literally going to call someone, hey, come, come, come out, watch, I want to rape. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite ridiculous mm -hmm. to, to sort of ask that. And, you know, stuff like that make it really difficult because at the end of the day, is my word against your word. You know, how can you really prove that that, that went on? So, I mean, legislation, legislation can come in to help, you know, somehow taking away this requirement of the law and, you know, um, mm. just generally there's a, there's a feeling, there's, a, there's an impression. Some people say it's a, it's a, cultural, uh, it's a cultural thing. Um, some people will say, oh, uh, you were raped. Uh, Yusef, what were you wearing? Yusef, mm. why did you go there? I mean, these, these sort of, you know, these sort of uh, 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 statements are, they, they shouldn't that be tolerated. Undermine the fact that rape is rape. Yeah. And it does need to end. The second message that you touched on is that to do with HIV and AIDS in Nigeria today. We have some of the highest statistics in the world, and it's extremely disturbing. However, you were saying that you're not a victim of your circumstance. Why is it important for victims or survivors, actually, of HIV and or AIDS to actually understand that message? I think it's very important because, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. Uh, where there's life, there's hope. And, you know, that's something I've always lived by and I will continue to live by. And I thought it was very important to sort of spread the message. Uh, you know, as long as you're alive, whatever it is that you're facing, you can still get through it, you know. We, I've, we've heard stories of uh, victims of HIV that have lived many, many years after, mm -hmm. you know, and the stigma often attached to it, you know, people are often ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it just shouldn't be, you know, people shouldn't stigmatize. Uh, carriers of the virus and you know it doesn't make them less human okay. at the end of the day fair enough valid point let's move on to the last one which is suicide now i had a guest on the show just before you came on olaji deaji and he wrote a book about purpose and i asked him what he thinks about suicide being criminalized in nigeria and i want to pose the exact same question to you nigeria is the 30th most depressive country on the face of the planet today yet we still criminalize suicide. How do you feel about that? <clears throat> I think I understand why it, it could be, but um, at the end of the day, there's no reason why anyone should want to end it. There's no reason why anyone should say, you know, this is it, I just want to take my own life. And, you know, I think it's as a deterrent, you know, that, that, that law is there. It's probably so that, you know, less people think about it because they know that, you know, at the end of the day, it's, mm. it's a crime. But isn't it a bit counter counterproductive if suicide is a crime? So how would you punish the offender when they've already killed us? Right. Right? Yeah, it's, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I guess attempted uh. suicide should be a crime. Yeah. Yeah. OK, least, fair least, enough, yeah. fair enough. I just wanted to get your opinions on that as well. Um, so what I want to touch on before we round up is the fact that a lot of people are now labeling you as a conscious artist, right? People are referring to musicians in our history like Fela, et cetera, and saying Files is going down a similar route. Is this a route that we are going to see you traveling on for a long period of time? Well, 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 conscious music is something I've always made and, you know, I. I've always, even when I'm making uh, Fun songs, music, they're still, yeah. I'm making lamba, you know, something that you can dance, mm -hmm. move your body to. There's still that conscious message in there. There's still elements of seriousness, and there's still messages that you pick mm. from them. And it's something I will continue to do, mm -hmm. you know, up until I stop making music. You know, I will continue to spread, you know, uh, positive messages and messages that I feel like people need to 
sort of wake up to. And mm -hmm. right now, I'm actually working on an album that is entirely conscious. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big step. I don't know if anyone has sort of, I mean, of course, apart from uh, the greats from back in the day, like you mentioned, Fela Kuti, um, you know, I don't know if anyone has sort of in recent time done that kind of thing. But yeah, it's something I'm willing to embark on. And when can we expect that? Very soon, very <laughs> soon, very soon. I don't want to give you a date yet. Bigger, my God, it's up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, that makes sense. Now, I want to play a little game with you. I'm going to name you some people, Ooh, and I, I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to your head. <laughs> I don't even have the people's names on my tab. Don't think oh, I'm wow. going here for anything special. <coughs> so I'm okay. thinking off the top of my head as well. Actually, let me see who is celebrating a birthday today and start off with that person. Mohamed Sambo, ex-vice president of Nigeria. Nothing comes to my head. Mohamed Buhari. One word. Go. <laughs> Which kid? Star. Um, Saraki. Oh, man. You, you are, I, do you really want me to express myself? Yeah, one word. <sighs> this is the word. Like, <laughs> are we playing word. charades now? Yeah, like... <laughs> okay, fire shade. In incredulously hilarious. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, David O. Star. Don Jazzy. Crazy. The real Femi. Boy! <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Those are some people that I could think of off the top of my head. One last question to bust your brain. How do you describe the color yellow to someone that's blind? I say it's bright and it's... Yeah, it's the color of window me. <laughs> but if they're blind, they don't know the color of window me. So oh, I just feel bright. It's bright. it's bright. So if I'm blind now and you said to me that it's bright, am I going to understand that color. it's the, is it the only I bright color? Though? Because in, it's not the only bright color, Sha. Hmm. Because in Yoruba, there's, I don't think there's yellow. There's, you say like Pukpa, and Pukpa means mm. like light. So you are yellow pretty much Interesting. in Yoruba. Last yeah. question. Who's the president of the Sweet Girl Association? Well, so, oh, bits of calls. Leila Johnson Salami in the building, ladies and gentlemen. That is the president of the SGA. <laughs> to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.